Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing really, really well. So today's video is actually just very much on topic for me personally <laughs> because this is a topic and a subject that I'm currently doing quite a bit of research on because I am starting to think about changing my bow. I have a very nice one and I've realised that I am starting to slightly prefer my significantly cheaper spare bow. <laughs> So I'm starting to think like, oh, I kind of want to get something that's a bit better quality than that, but kind of has those properties. And so it's been something that I've been doing a lot of research into. And so I basically just wanted to share my research with you, share the things that I've found, and also share the things that I've also found to be true when picking out my own bow. Now, if you are new to my channel, you may not know this, but I am a viola player primarily, but I played violin up until my grade eight, then I switched. But the reason that I've also put cello bow in the title of this video is because I think all of these things can help you no matter what instrument you're looking for, apart from maybe double basses, because that's a whole different kettle of fish that I will never pretend to know anything about. If you are new to my channel, then my name is Heather and I'm a professional viola player living and working in the UK. Um, and I just make videos all about kind of musician life, professional musician life, and a few different kind of helpful tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, please do give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. It would be lovely to have you. Okay, so I do have two little things to say before we get into the categories proper as it were. Um, and the first thing is that with bows it is a massively, massively subjective thing. That's kind of why I'm going to come at this from a very general things to be looking for rather than a specific this is what I want. <laughs> because what suits me will be completely different to what suits you, to what suits your teacher, to what suits your mum. It's just going to be totally different. So just bear that in mind and it's also why I'm not going to be giving you a list of bow makers or, you know, a particular... Brands is the wrong word, but you know what I mean. I'm not going to give you a specific list just because it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, it's the bow that suits you rather than the bow that is the creme de la creme on paper. Okay, so first up, if you are a beginner looking for a bow, this section is for you. I'm going to put timestamps along this video just because I think it's definitely something which everybody coming to this video will be looking for advice on different things. But if you are a beginner, then this is the section for you. The first thing, and this is probably my, my thing I want to stress the most to you, is to not spend too much, okay? If you are in the first few months of learning to play, or maybe you are an adult and you have you know, decided that you want to learn a string instrument, amazing. I have a whole video on that subject that I will, I'll put up here, up here. But don't go out and spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds, thousands of pounds on a new bow because your technique is going to change, okay? It's in its baby stages, it's in its infancy. So you will change and adapt and you will be looking to change your bow again in a year or two's time. So buy a bow that still suits you now and that feels good in your hand, but please don't drop hundreds of pounds on it because you're just gonna find yourself changing it again in you know a little while. You don't need a super expensive bow right now and by the time you are looking towards maybe investing a bit more money in one, your technique and your wants and your needs are going to be totally different to what they are now. So just, yeah, just bear that in mind when you are going shopping. A couple of things to be looking out for when you are choosing a bow and just to just to check that it is of a decent quality okay you don't while saying that you don't need to spend masses which you absolutely do not you also don't want to be spending absolutely nothing because you you know you want something that's going to serve you well and that as you improve you will be able to enjoy and tell the difference and one of the really really important things to look at is where the chamber curve is now the chamber curve is this here and ideally you want it to be pretty much in the center of the bow if it's off towards the tip or if off or if it's too far towards the heel and the frog of the bow it's going to be the weight is going to be all over the place so you want to be looking for that curve to be more or less in the center of the bow 
The next thing you want to be thinking about is the weight of it. How does it feel in your hand? When you pick it up with your, with your bow hold, feel free to critique my bow hold if you so wish, <laughs> it should feel comfortable in your hand. You don't want to feel like your little finger is having to work and strain to hold up the weight, but you also don't want it to feel like it's too light and almost tipping up the other way. You want it to just kind of feel nice and balanced and like you can like you can move. You should be able to gesture quite freely, and I mean this comes into bow hold as well, which is something I can absolutely make a video on if that's something you'd want to see. But you should be able to gesture with it. Don't go too crazy, we don't want to break anything. But you should be able to move. If you find that as soon as you go from this position to this, it, it falls out of your hand, that's probably not going to be the right bow for you. In fact, it's definitely not going to be the right bow for you. Don't, don't, don't buy that one. The other thing to consider is just where, you know, where do you want to put your fingers, okay? And this is, you know, potentially where taking your teacher along with you could be helpful because they can just, you know, help move you to the right position if you really are in the beginning stages. But just think about where you want to put your hand. Does it feel comfortable? Is there a, a bit of the frog that's kind of digging in or, you know, your fingers are slipping around or something or the curve here doesn't feel quite comfortable? You know, things like that. Just does it, does it feel good in your hand? Is basically what it comes down to and if the answer is no then put it down try another so when it comes to the materials that bows can be made out of there are three main types you've got pernambuco you've got brazil wood and then you have carbon fiber now pernambuco is a funny name also confusingly also from Brazil, but Pernambuco is a very specific kind of tree and they are actually now starting to really restrict how much of it you can harvest. These are like the creme de la creme of the bow wood. They are, they're kind of wi widely renowned to be the best. However, just because something says it is the best on paper does not mean it is the best for you. So please, 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 do not just think to yourself, I must only buy Pernambuco bows from now on. I only, you know, I only want the best. And if you are a professional looking at professional level bows, then maybe that is something to be, you know, to be considered. But, and if you're anywhere in the spectrum up to that point, I would seriously consider also seriously consider the other two types. So you also have Brazil wood. This is a general term for woods that come from a tropical origin. So it can be a bit of a mishmash of different kinds of woods. It can be a composite material. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean it is bad, okay? I have a Brazilian wood bow that I really, really enjoy. I also have a Pernambuco bow that is the more expensive one, but like I said, we'll get onto that in a sec. <laughs> and then you have your carbon fiber bows. Now, people get snobby about carbon fiber bows, I'll be perfectly honest with you, because, you know, they don't look, although I think you can get some that actually look, have the wood effect now. But I had a carbon fiber violin bow, and I did my grade eight on it, and to be honest, I think I'd probably still be playing on it today. It was a lovely bow. And if you are buying a bow for a child, they can be an excellent choice because they're often a little bit more affordable and they are significantly harder to break. Carbon fiber is a really, really hardy material and you know, if it's gonna, if it's, if it's more likely that it might get dropped or it might get, you know, shoved in the case a bit roughly or whatever, carbon fiber can be a really, really good way to go. So when it comes to the hair on the actual bow, other than steering well clear of synthetic, just don't go near it. It's just, I've never found a bow that is of any decent quality that has synthetic hair on it. Don't overthink it. Most bows are Mongolian horsehair. In fact, I think they have to be Mongolian horsehair. Not entirely sure. But the blue Mongolian horsehair is the absolute top tier if, if that's what you're looking for. This is when the luthier will go through and actually, you know, feel each individual hair and make sure that there are no lumps or bumps or rough patches or anything. It's basically the category of horsehair that has gone through the most rigorous uh, you know, a selection process, and it's all selected by hand, which obviously results in a really, really beautiful quality of bow. But don't overthink this. Again, if you're not at a professional level looking for a bow of, of that kind of quality, don't overthink it. As long as it's real horsehair, you'll be okay. 
When it comes to the sound that you want to get out of your bow, each bow will just, it is incredible how much of a difference it can make to an instrument. So this is where when you go into a shop, and we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more in a, in a bit, but when you're trying them, always start with very simple stuff, you know, long open notes, uh, scales, you know, short little exercises, get an idea of how that bow makes your instrument sound and then you know you can you can go from there but it, it can make a massive difference so this is where absolutely try before you buy is an absolute must when it comes to bows. The actual stick of the bow it can kind of be one of two things it's either kind of an octagonal kind of shape or it's going to be round there is no evidence that i've been able to find if i am wrong please do correct me but i have not been able to find any scientific evidence that says that one is better than the other so again this is a don't overthink it job if you find a bow you love and it's an octagonal shape then great go with it as I've mentioned a couple of times throughout this video, make sure you go into the shop to try them. Now, there are a few places in the UK where you can, you know, order a few bows to try. They'll take a deposit of some kind, uh, which you get back, obviously, if you don't want to keep any of the bows. But uh, the, they will send you a selection, then you can try them and, and send them back. But I would say, if at all possible, go into the shop and try them. Make sure that you walk in and you are very, very clear on your budget. Now, they will obviously want to sell you a more expensive bow. A good shop will not oversell you. It's very important to say that. But just go in and say, this is my absolute upper limit. Don't show me anything above this. But then, if possible, try not to take any notice of how much the bows are from that point. Because you can be so easily swayed by the fact that, you know, this bow is £100 and this bow is £300. If you like the £100 bow more, and it suits you better, and it sounds better with your instrument, and it's the one for you, that's the one you should be buying. It doesn't matter that this one's more expensive, it doesn't make it better for you. So. If, they, if they're willing to, they sometimes they'll take the little label off, and obviously sometimes they don't want to do that because they don't want to lose track, but just don't look at the label, don't look at the price, try them out and just pick the one that's right for you. But like I say, that's why it's important to tell them what your budget is first so that they can show you a range of bows, you know, within that price budget. Another good way to do it as well, so that you don't get overwhelmed, if, especially if it's a large shop where they have, you know, dozens and dozens of bows, Ask them to show you sort of, you know, a batch of 10 at a time, because then you can try them out, you can pick, you know, two or three that are your favourite from that bunch, put them aside, try another 10, pick, you know, two or three of your favourites, put them aside, you know, and do it that way until you have the selection, and then you can whittle it down from there again. This is a really, really, really helpful process with bows, because you need to kind of pick up several to to start learning what feels good in your hand because the bow that you have and that you've started with may be a terrible fit for you it's good to have it with you so that you can compare against it but it may take just a little while for you to start getting the hang of you know what you like and what you don't also make sure that you bring your current instrument and bow with you you are buying a bow for your instrument it's really really important that you test the two out together and make sure that they work well if you go into a shop and they you know hand you a violin viola or a cello to try out bows on you're going to find the bow that may feel good in your hand true which is good but you're going to find a bow that sounds good with that instrument and then you may well get home try it on yours and it doesn't sound the same and you'll be left quite frustrated so make sure that you take your instrument with you First impressions are also really, really important when it comes to bows. I remember when I was picking out my uh, my last violin bow that I had, I went to a lovely luthier who I know very, very well, knows me very well, and he sort of gave me a range of them. And I literally just picked them up and was like, no, no, no. <laughs> like, and I'd only had them in my hand for a couple of seconds, and I was like, nah, nah, nah. And I remember saying to him, I was like, I'm so sorry, <laughs> just rejecting all of your bows. And he was like, no, it's great. It's so much easier for me if you, because, you know, he knew all of these bows inside and out. And he was like, I, you know, it feels a little bit like you're choosing a wand and you're in Harry Potter. It's a, it's a similar kind of process. But, you know, he said it was really helpful because I could just instantly be like, nah, the weight, like the weight feels too, too far towards my front, you know, front, the front of my hand, you know, oh, this one's way too heavy and my pinky's gonna die. You know, all of that kind of thing. It was really, really easy to do. 
and I was surprised actually at how decisive I was because you walk into the shop and you're like I don't know what I like like I can't explain to you exactly what my perfect bow feels like in my hand but as soon as it's there it's a dream this may sound a little bit odd but don't try and sound impressive when you're trying out bows. Now, if you have a considerate person selling you these bows, they will probably lay them out for you and then kind of go off into another room and do something else and kind of leave you to it. But sometimes they <laughs> sometimes they just stand in the room and watch you. And it can be so tempting in those circumstances to, you know, start practicing your most impressive thing or, you know, whatever. Remember that you're there to try bows. You're not there to win an audition or to practice. <laughs> so make sure you start with simple stuff. If the bow doesn't feel good, doing basic long note open strings it ain't gonna feel good doing paganini and then my last little thing is that if you are looking to also upgrade your instrument do that first because if you buy a bow that you love and suits your instrument as it is now and then in a couple of weeks time you know you buy a new instrument chances are that bow is not going to match up super well it may do you never know but it, the chances are it won't match really well to the new instrument so just if you're gonna be swapping both or upgrading both then make sure that you change the instrument first and then fit the bow to that rather than the other way around and the sun has come out just for the end of the video and now it's going again i do apologize we are still relying on natural light here but i hope that this has been helpful to you if you have any more questions then please 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 just comment them below i get back to every comment unless it's rude in which case you know i might not but <laughs> i will always answer your questions if you need me to and i hope that this is helpful like i say this is you know partially my own experience and also partially just some research that i've been doing uh in my own kind of pursuit of a new bow so i hope that this has been helpful if it has then please do give this video a like and i will see you guys in the next one bye when it comes to the hair used Basically, do not go anywhere near synthet 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 syn